What if I told you that you could replace all of this with this? Today I'll be doing a short review of the Stein Mini Cassette Lock Ring Tool, an ingenious little tool that could significantly lighten your load while on a self-supported bicycle tour. What's up guys, welcome to the review. Before we get started, I'd really appreciate it if you'd take a quick moment to hit the subscribe button. We upload videos about bikepacking and bike touring. That means gear reviews, tutorials, ride videos. So if that's something you're into, hit the button. For the last leg of our Australian tour, I carried all of this stuff in my frame bag. And for those who don't know, these are all the tools that are required to remove a cassette from the rear wheel. There's the lock ring removal tool, which is used to unscrew the lock ring. The type I've got here works with either a socket or a wrench or an adjustable spanner like this one. And then there's the chain whip. A chain whip is used to hold the cassette in place and stop it from spinning while you unscrew the lock ring. Now, why would you want to remove the cassette while you're on tour? Well, for starters, you might want to replace it. Cassettes are a consumable item and they're so easy to replace that you might as well do it yourself rather than paying a bike shop to do it. And secondly, if you break a rear spoke, sometimes removing the cassette can be the only way that you can access the rear hub to replace it. And even if it's possible without removing the cassette, sometimes it just makes it easier. In short, if you're gonna be mechanically self-sufficient on tour, then you need to be able to take the cassette off. But as you've seen, the tools required to do so are pretty heavy and pretty bulky. Enter the Stein tool. The Stein tool was originally created and machined by Jim Stein in Arizona and continues to be produced by his company to this day. Definitely check out his website in the description below because he has machined some really interesting little problem solvers and the about page has a nice little bit of interesting history. Now the Stein tool isn't an original concept. There's a few other tools that operate in the same way, like the Unia lock ring tool or the NBT2 tool. And once you know how the Stein tool works, you'll be able to apply the same principles to these other tools and then buy whichever one you want based on what's available. But having said that, this is a really nicely machined tool and I would definitely recommend that you pick one up. All right, let's see how it works. Okay guys, before we get started, I just need to apologize for the grody state of this bike and drivetrain. Since we stopped touring, it's basically become my commuter bike, and as such, it doesn't really get a whole lot of love. But anyway, first thing we've got to do, as you might imagine, is get this rear wheel off. So once you've got the wheel off, first thing we want to do is take off this side of the skewer, and then the tool, just slots into place, like so. Now, if you've got a gap of more than three millimeters between the lock ring and the dropouts, Stein tool provide these little spacers here that you can put in to close that gap so that the lock ring tool doesn't fall out while you're trying to do this. Okay, so now we're at the hardest part of the whole process which is trying to finagle this wheel back in whilst keeping this tool in place against the lock ring. All right, so it's a bit fiddly, but once you're done, it should look something like this. You can see the spaces in there just taking up the room between the tool and the dropout so that it doesn't fall out in the next step. Now, you might not necessarily need those spaces, but it's nice that they include them because I did. So for the next step, we're just gonna need this little piece here. And what we're gonna do is just rotate the wheel until we find this hole here. Now we need to find somewhere we, where we can attach this and it can push against something that's clockwise of it. So here would normally be perfect, but this won't quite fit in there. So we'll just go a bit further around and we've got a spot here. Now 
Now you need to make sure that this is in there real tight because this is the piece that the whole thing's gonna lever against in order to remove the lock ring. All right, so this is the moment of truth. At this point, if everything down here is set up correctly, you should just be able to pedal forward and the tool will unscrew the cassette. So let's see if it works, eh? Sounds like it's undone. So now that we've loosened this lock ring, we can use the tool to finish the job by hand. And would you look at that? Lock ring off. And the cassette can follow. All right, so once we've done whatever we needed to do with the cassette here, you can just screw the lock ring back in with the tool by hand and then refit the wheel exactly the same as we did before. Just remember to take this piece out before you do. And this time when we reinstall this, we're gonna do so with the hole at the bottom here. Now at this point, all we need to do to torque down the lock ring is use the wheel as a lever. Only this time, instead of pedaling the bike, we're gonna turn the wheel backwards by hand. Now you don't need to do this very much. All it takes is like an eighth of a turn or somewhere around that. It doesn't take much. If you over tighten this, it's gonna make it much more difficult to unscrew in future. So a little goes a long way. And that's it, your cassette's back on and the lock rings torque down. All right, so as you can see, this is a really neat solution to a classic touring cyclist's dilemma. But there are a few things to bear in mind. Firstly, before you use this tool, make sure that your lock ring hasn't been over tightened. Maybe before you go off on any adventures with this thing, remove the cassette via conventional methods and then reinstall it using the Stein tool. An over tightened lock ring is a potential cause for some damage here. While you're using this tool, you'll also want to make sure that you shift the bike into one of the lower gears. Things will go a lot easier this way. Another issue with this tool is it can be really fiddly to get into place, especially if you need to use the spacers like I did. Really pay attention to what you're doing here and make sure that everything is 100% in place before you step on that crank. And above all, please, 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 read the instructions before you use this and only use it on a sturdy steel touring bike. Probably don't use this on an aluminium bike and definitely do not use this on carbon. It is possible to damage your bike when you're using this tool, but as long as you're careful and you follow the instructions, you shouldn't have anything to worry about and you could shave a load of weight off of your bike touring toolkit. But at the end of the day, you use this tool at your own risk. All right, so what do you reckon guys? Pretty nifty. Drop a comment below and let me know what you guys think. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Cheers.